Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick and we are here in Paris at the MPLS and SDN World Congress 2015 where I'm talking with an old friend, Nicholas Fischbach, Director of Strategy, Architecture and Innovation, Colt. Great to see you, Nicholas. Um, you let's get straight to it. First of all, we should explain perhaps to the viewers that it looks pretty odd. We're sat in, well, France is the home of cinema, Lumiere Brothers and all that, right? We're actually in a cinema at the venue of the event because it's so busy everywhere else we can't get another room to film in. So this it is, is what it's a bit. And we are very close to the ground. So, and my legs only just reach the ground, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Anyway, let's get into this. Um, SDN and NFV are as much about business transformation as they are about network transformation. What do you think service providers need to do from a business transformation perspective to take full advantage of SDN and NFV? I, I think it's true. I mean, we said, I, I think I said many times, you know, that technology is pretty easy in this space and it's, you know, the challenge is really how to transform the organization, you know, and that's exactly the question you're asking. Um, you know, businesses you know, need to transform the way they operate. So the whole operating model evolution, we touch about that a lot. I think that's happening. You know, so the internal changes, I think, you know, are, are well in progress at many organizations. We started very early, so we have the benefits, and we see, we, see, we see it happening. What we see happening next is really transforming the way we do business with our customers. So the whole customer experience piece is now in motion. I think the, uh, the portfolio teams understand the benefits of having a you know, more flexible underlying platforms to deliver service to customers. So that part of the transformation, which was also you know, very static in the past with you know, long established roadmaps, planning for 18 months, uh, a very static customer experience, you know, moving to an online customer experience, this whole thing is happening right now and it's enabled by those uh, underlying building blocks, you know, SDN and NFV being two of them, but I think honestly there's many more of those building blocks that we are transforming uh, in the industry at the moment. Thank you. What do you think then, given where we are at the moment, technology-wise and organisation-wise, what are the biggest challenges for service providers in the market today? There's quite a few. So there's, you know, all the internal challenges, obviously, you know, you know transforming the organization, upskilling the people, uh, looking at the new go-to-market models, uh, having the right tools, you know, for the, for the right customer experience, the end-to-end -end SLAs, all of that, you know, is one, but it's still, you know, obviously very internally focused and, you know, it's just starting to touch on the customer experience piece. Um, the, the other issues that, that I see that we have a lot is around how do we select the next vendors we want to play with? This market is super busy. The show is super busy. There's, you know, I don't think that show, this show was so busy in the last couple of years, the number of vendors with the stands, the number of the presentations in the rooms. You can really see that the, the market is, uh, is, is hot and is boiling, and that we are ha we're having a very hard time you know, selecting the right technologies because there's so much to choose from. Uh, it is not easy to, uh, you know, to pick the good things for the bad things. It, it takes a lot of time to... Uh, uh, you have to invest a lot of time to evaluate all those vendors. You know, their roadmap keeps changing too. So the, one of the good things of being flexible and have more velocity is actually nice. Same time, it's making our life, our life easier with the selection process and uh, something you put in today, you may actually be able to reap and replace it in six months, which we haven't done for decades sometimes. So this whole change in you know, velocity, uh, the, uh, the sheer number of startups and established vendors too moving into this space, um, the very, I'd say, unclear value proposition. So, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it's making our, hard, our life really, really, really hard. I think the same thing is happening, you mentioned a few times already in, in other interviews with you, is uh, all the uh, working groups, SDO, so the standard defining organizations, um, all the efforts that people are trying to put together to standardize or at least, um, you know, make sure there is, you know, one common way of doing something. There's way too many of those groups, and you know, even though we are a well-established vendor, we have quite some resources. On it, it's impossible to keep up. So we are trying to be very, very selective in you know what we want to work on, and really focus on a selected number of vendors and areas, SDO working groups. You know, I'm not even talking about participating, you know, and contributing to them, but just mm -hmm. trying to keep up with, with what's happening there. So that's what I see at the moment. It is. It is kind of at this point where we need to maybe simplify again because you know we get we get, went in all directions. It's pretty nice, but now try to find what the right direction bring is. It back together, bring right? it back, to, you know, bring it back home. You know, bring it back yeah. together. I think we're at that point because otherwise it's it's just too complex, to, uh, you know, too many variables in the equation. What do you think are the challenges when it comes to implementing transformational technologies like NFV and SDN in the organisation? How? How do people do it? We, we can, we've talked about this before, but are you seeing any changes in the way in which um, 
implementing of SDN and if it's changing? I think the key word you used is actually implementing it. So moving away from just doing proof of concept, lab tests, playing with the technology to actually you know, put it into, into the network and actually use it to, uh, to serve customers, even if it's just in you know, the alpha trials or beta trials. But we've seen a, a few presentations today by, also by some of our peers that are actually deploying and uh, have this customer learning experience curve and happening. And so, I said it's really great. You know, and uh, you know, we've, we've done VHCP over two years ago now. We're looking into the next phase. We've done a lot of SDN stuff already. We, we took a very uh, incremental approach, but also an approach to say, hey, let's deploy it and learn from it. And I think we see that happening at the moment, which, which is really, really great, I'd say. Um, you know, the other challenges, obviously, a lot of new technologies. You know, it's not because it's a startup or because it's open source that it's better than something that was, you know, from a big vendor and closed source. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the, all the learning curves that existed, you know, people have obviously, I think, learned the lessons over the years. But, you know, the first release of code has usually some bugs in it, sometimes some major bugs. Uh, the first major release get delayed. You know, all, all these things, you know, it's, I've just tried, I mean, it's not that history is repeating itself, but to some extent it is. So um, it's good because you can apply lessons learned, but at the same time, hey, you know, it's not a different world from what we've seen in, in recent years. Um, and the other one is, you know, again, you know, we touched on it already, is evolving the operating model, upskilling the people, is making sure that you, know, you have ways to actually test, deploy, consume, operate all those new technologies. You know, it's, it's easier said than done. I mean, it's, it's moving at such a fast pace and it's such a advanced, um, you know, sometimes technology that having the resources on the service provider side upskill to be able to consume it and deploy it, you know, takes quite some time. You know, the market is dry. It's hard to find those resources, not just in Europe, I think all over the world. And, uh, you know, in, we, we need to find, you know, s you know, interesting ways of consuming this maybe in a more packaged manner. So instead of picking just the open source piece to play with it, which is fine. Maybe you're going to go to a, go to a vendor to have a package solution supported by their teams and so on, to give us a way to actually uh, implement and play in, uh, in a manner that enables us to provide the, the right quality of service to our customers as part of the service. Given what we've just been talking about, Nicholas, and what we've discussed so far, been looking at the, the challenges, or the, the, the difficulties that might lie in the way of implementation, all sorts of things like that. Given the pain that this can involve to a telco, to a network operator and so on, why is it worth it? I think, you know, the, the answer is pretty simple. You know, it's what's going to enable business going forward. You know, we, you know, why were the OTT players successful? Because they could, you know, deliver a lot of new services rapidly because they only had to take care of the software, they didn't have to take care of the pipes. Absolutely. Somebody needs to take care of the pipes. You know, sometimes people take a very simplistic view of what it takes to run a pipe, <laughs> and they forget that the service provider is not just running water pipes or electricity. You know, there's lots of complexity there. Mm. We try to simplify it, obviously, uh, with, with SDN and NV, but you know, if you want to continue to compete in the space, you know, be able to offer you know, those new services, this flexibility that people are used to from you know, the OTT side, for example, we need this, we need to be able to get to, uh, together quick to market um, with, with new services, we need to be able to prototype much more quickly. So this whole thing, you, know, you need the enabling platform to be able to do that. You know, and you know, it's not just software, you know, people seem to think you know, it, you know, software is eating the world, you know, everything is done in software. Software needs to run on something. And I think people are, we are not at this point where people realize that you know, there's a, there's a nice, or there's, there's a right balance to be found between, you know, what do you need specific hardware for, what is software only, and depending on what you need, you know, where does the needle sit between running on, you know, FPGA, ASICs, you know, versus running on uh, as, um, Merchant Silicon versus running it on, you know, commercial off the shelf, you know, x86. And I think this, the fact that people have deployed now, they understand, hey, this can be done fully in software on x86, cool, you know, this one, hey, high bandwidth, high packet rate, line rate, you know, hey, let's do it on dedicated hardware. I think that's where we're getting to. So I think so that's really great. You know, the, um, I think it's the first time, you know, today that uh, I've seen, or today this week, that I've seen the people sharing more lessons learned and not just us, you know, at call being up there, being kind of the only one, you know, sometimes, you know, feel, feel a little bit, you know, alone and isolated. Lonely. Yeah, a little bit lonely, exactly. I think, you know, that, that's really great to hear. So I, I, for, for once, I was sucking information about, <laughs> hey, you're doing this? Cool, you know, for, it's not just us. When and where, Nicholas, do you think we're going, first going to see the benefits of SDN being reaped and an FV? Do you think it's a matter of geographies or something else, regions, I mean, do you think it'll be North America, Asia, Europe, Australasia, whatever? I think we, we've, it, it's, it's honestly, it's hard to say. Um, I think, you know, over, over recent years, you know, I think we've been paving, you know, leading the way in Europe, you know, with our virtual C deployment already, the SDN overlay in the data center, so we've done a lot of that. We've seen, you know, other players in Asia-Pac, 
uh, do the same on, you know, on like WAN SDN. In the US, some large players have deployed a, a multi-service platform that also uses SDN. So I think we, we see pockets of, um, of small deployments in all the regions. Um, you know, I don't think it's going to be a region. It's more you know, the service providers that have understood and have moved away enough and the transformation and understanding the new business landscape that are you know launching, you know, and it's it's good to see. I think we're going to see uh, some acceleration, you know, more announcements uh, from major service providers, up, you know, probably across the globe, uh, trying to trying to push ahead with uh, those new offerings. One other thing that we've seen more and more since basically since the cloud started to become real, um, and certainly with NFV and SDN and other parts of the industry, is collaboration and partnerships of the sort we hadn't seen before. There are companies that were rivals, competitors, hated each other's guts, who are now working together for either a set period on a certain project or continually going forward because what? Because nobody can do everything at once. Yeah, I mean, they have to. You know, <laughs> I think you know, we, we forced a lot of our vendors to behave exactly in this manner when we uh, did this modular care isn't platform, you know, we said, We've had enough of monolithic solutions, single vendor solutions, the fact that there's a lot of lock-in, that you don't get the innovation when you need it, that the, you know, the price points don't get, you know, help you with the unit cost you need over, over the years and so on. So uh, it's good to see the industry going down in this direction. You know, obviously, people you know, play in this information sharing, let's do it together, but at the same time, they also want to make sure they protect their own business. So they, I think you know, for them, or for some of them, it's really hard to find this balance between uh, how can they behave the old way and how much should they behave in this new way you know, and not just for marketing purposes, but actually for the, uh, for the good of their customers uh, to do this. So there's a lot of efforts. Um, again, I still you know, see a lot of vendors just chipping in, you know, in all those projects who have their name there. You know, how much do they contribute for real? You know, it's like a little bit of all these open source projects. You know, they are super important, but then you, you, if you start to dig and scratch the surface, you realize that, hey, how many you know, um, uh, individual contributors or how many individual companies are actually contributing versus all the ones that are listed on the website, and it's usually a very small subset. So hopefully, you know, going forward, we we'll see more of this. But I think also, at some point, as I said earlier, you know, it, we we need a little bit more focus, some simplicity. You know, I'm I'm looking forward for some of those working groups to actually stop, disappear, some others, you know, to maybe uh, gain some of the members, but really get more focus because for us, it, it is very hard and. Uh, you know, as much as I, as I welcome this modernity and the fact that, you know, people look for openness, as I said, at, at some point I think the openness is a new F word because everybody wants to open, everyone wants to part. I think I used that one with you. You know, the reality is, you know, when it comes down to the PO and can we put this in a contract, you know, hey, we want to, you know, bind you guys to what you say publicly. You know, it's, it's a different, it's, it's sometimes still a different discussion. But I, I think there's, there's willingness in, um, you know, in a lot of the enterprises, you know, all the new, small and large to, uh, to do more because, we as customers demand it. You know, the days of non-modular, non-open, you know, those days are over. You, you can survive. This, Nicholas, is, apart from being the SDN World Congress, it's also the MPLS World Congress. I'd like to ask you about MPLS, multi-protocol label switching. Um, I was writing about it 20 odd years ago. It is um, a well-established, shall we say, and not to say venerable technology, and lots of technologies fade away, you know, generation in and, and disappear, but MPLS hasn't done so. Is that because it's programmable, and is that programmability is what it makes SD attractive to SDN? I mean, a MPLS changed, you know, the networking industry in the 80s, right? So yeah, some point, some point late 80s, yeah, you said yeah. 20 years, yeah, roughly. And a bit uh, more. And a bit more, <laughs> yeah, just trying to think that when, you know, tax switching moving to MPLS. Yeah. I don't think, you know, it, I don't think, you know, at least, you know, from our point of view, it's not going to go away. You know, the, uh, what we plan to do with our integrated layer 2, layer 3 network going forward, the core part of it is MPLS. So it's not going to go away. You know, I think with all the developments you see right now with, you know, a segment routing, um, you know, people still, you know, uh, build on MPLS to do that and you know when, um, service providers are going to like it because it's it's building incrementally on something that a lot of people understand you know the same routing protocols yeah. the same you know uh, label protocols you know with some evolutions some new features some new additions but it's going to be the core part you know, is it going to be MPLS MPLS TP something else which flavor I think it's going to really depend on your environment and what you're going to do with it but you know in, in our in our view SDN or not you know, MPLS is, MPLS is going to stick around. And then again, how are you going to use it? I think it depends on your use cases, you know, service chaining with MPLS, using something else. But, you know, it's, it's going to, uh, to stay around for, for quite some time, for sure. 
Thank you. We're out of time, so Nicholas Fishbach, as usual, thanks very much indeed. Thank you.